uh, canned air from the issue room or bring in your own and very carefully get the dust off of your original. If you're making a flatbed scan on the Epson scanner, make sure that the imaging bed is clean. If there's gunk on there, you can check out a chamois from the issue room and lightly rub it off. And if it's not coming off, get an attendant and ask them to help you clean it. That's step number one. Make sure your originals and your um, scanning bed is clean. Step two is to launch SilverFast 8. SilverFast 8 should be on the dock if you log in as the generic user. Otherwise, you're going to need to go ahead and choose it from the Applications folder. It's under S for SilverFast 8. Here's the icon. Click and drag it to the dock or simply just double click on the software. Today we're demonstrating um, scanning from the Nikon 9000. We're going to scan a black and white 35 millimeter negative. Uh, if you'd like to take a tour of SilverFast 8, you can play the tour movie and the friendly German fellow will walk you through uh, the various aspects of SilverFast 8. Here is my source, which is the Nikon 9000. I'm going to choose Start. And this is a new version of SilverFast. The older versions look really nothing like this. The next thing I'm going to do is walk us through the interface. Now this is an image that is held in the preview cache. It's an image that I did about 10 minutes ago. So bear in mind that whatever you scan is going to hold the preview under the username. If you're scanning under generic username, anybody who logs in as the generic user will be able to see it. If it's your username, it shouldn't be a problem because that preview is saved in your username. So if you don't want anybody to see a preview of your image, scan a blank frame before you leave. Today we're scanning a negative, so I'm going to choose the negative option. It's not a positive, it's not a slide, it's a black and white negative, so I'm going to make sure that black and white negative is selected. If I were over on the Epson scanner, I would choose uh, to choose, um, choose the transparency option here. Uh, the next thing I want to choose is 16-bit for a black and white negative. That's a one-channel 16-bit image. If I was uh, scanning a color negative or a color slide, I would choose the 48-bit, uh, three-channel, 16 bits per channel option. Then you want to make your way. Uh, the next thing you want to do is do an overview. If you're on the Nikon 9000, you need to kind of remember where on the um, slide holder or the negative holder you put your negative. Because when we do an overview, it's going to show you uh, this option here. And, you know, technically it should be showing us a preview of the images. I'm not sure why it's not. So it's a good idea if you kind of remember which one you want to scan. I think mine is number one, I'm hoping. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say OK and then do a, uh, it should automatically do a preview for me. I'm just waiting for it. It takes a little bit of time. You can hear it kind of groaning and grinding and it looks like I chose incorrectly. Uh, number one was actually blank. So you'll get to see what a blank image looks like. I actually think it's quite beautiful. It's something that you could use um, as a border <laughs> in a collage for an image um, that we might use later. I really think it's kind of quite beautiful. So I'm going to guess again. That was incorrect. You could also scan a blank frame again before you leave in order to save the preview on the cache. So I'm going to choose this one instead and uncheck that one. Say OK. And it should scan the image on the other side which is number seven. Yes, and we can see it. You can see it down here in the pre-scan. It's showing us some kind of image. That's number seven on the other side. Uh, and it's the image that's closest to us on the black and white or on the um, negative holder. And I'm a little concerned because I don't see a picture yet. Wait for it, and nothing. All right, then. This is a 
demonstration gone awry. So what I'm going to do is eject my huh look at it they're not numbered which is very confusing we're going to try it again we got it last class it just took a minute let's see if we can try it so um, all of my negatives are on the rightmost side right hand side um, but this is a vertical and this is a horizontal so it's kind of confusing refresh these let's see what we get choose one in the middle this time let's see if that works and we may have to re-record this otherwise it's going to be painfully long and boring so we're waiting for the preview still it takes about 10 to 15 minutes to make one scan by the time you sit down and load it and dust it off and save it here we go so here's something coming up and I went ahead and chose one that was in the middle. I'm thinking that this is number one, the ones closest to us. Uh, when you put the film holder in, the one, the two frames closest to you are one and seven because those two are empty right now and those are the ones that scanned blank. Okay? So here we have a portrait and I went ahead and this is just the preview. Now when, once you get the preview, you want to adjust the um, crop here drag from the side. I don't want to crop in. You always want to include the border. This is a good kind of library method to show the um, edges of the original. And I'm going to click and just kind of move this over. It doesn't want to cooperate very well. There we go. That's pretty good. I can crop out the edges later in Photoshop. So and you might want to use these edges. You never know. So it's nice to kind of have the option of keeping them. Okay. Next, we're going to go through our settings. I'm going to call this scan number two because I already have a scan number one. You want to choose TIFF as your file. And then you want to decide where you're going to save it. I went ahead and um, chose the desktop uh, for my scans to get saved to. Uh, you make sure you bring your hard drive over to the station so you can back up your files from the desktop and throw them away after your scanning session. There's many different um, PPIs that you can choose from. Actually, this is PPI. Remember that for digital, uh, the highest resolution for a digital negative is 360 PPI or for an inkjet print, 360 PPI. If you're not sure what you're going to do with it, 300 is a good standard. If you're going to go to a chromogenic type C chemical print, um, however, I would just go ahead and scan a little bit more at 360 for the optimal inkjet output. Here we have the size of my original, which is a one, and, a one by one and a half. That's the size of the negative. And this is how much I want to enlarge it to. So we need to decide how large we want to make the image. It should, I, technically, I usually make it about an inch larger than I need to and so that I have room to crop and rotate and I can always size it down later in Photoshop. So this is going to end up being an 8 by 10, but I'll go ahead and make a 9 by 13. I can always make it smaller later. Okay, so we're just working our way down. We've done the dimensions here. We're, we've, we're scanning a negative 16 bit. I can set this to 16 bit um, and look at all the different values, my grayscale values. Okay. And we'll talk about how to look at those a little bit later. Uh, um, you can go through all of these settings if you want to. Um, the most important thing, though, are the scan dimensions, these two settings, and then the histogram setting. The histogram setting, this should not be clipped in. You don't want to correct the image here at the scanning level because these this is valuable pixel data that you don't want to lose so you want to make sure this is all the way out to the left and the right hand side so that you're capturing all the pixels in the image will adjust the tonality the darkness and lightness the contrast of it in Photoshop so I'm just gonna double check my dimensions here 360 ppi at 9 by 13 if everything looks good you're gonna go ahead and hit the scan button and you'll hear the machine whirring and making noise um, and once it's scanned, you're going to go ahead and carefully eject the holder by using the software or the button 
on the front of the scanner and make your second scan. If you have any questions, please let me know.